Good day, everybody. My name is Osborne, and welcome back to more Subnautica news. Now, I have been gone for a week. Some of you will have noticed, some of you will not have. Essentially, I went on a holiday, but I'm back. There was supposed to be some sort of massive Arctic announcement, but that did not go ahead because there were some delays. So luckily for me, maybe not so luckily for the rest of you, it was delayed, so I'll be able to cover all of that if that's what you wanted to watch. Now, there has been some stuff released recently while I was off, and there's also been a really, really quite big thing today that we haven't seen any of yet. But I'd just like to say, feel free to join my Discord, I will put the link in the description and I'll pin it at the top of the comments as well. You should go and join there, it's got a Subnautica channel, people are talking about Subnautica in there, there is news being put in there, basically whenever anything comes out it gets put into that chat, so it's worth going to if you want to stay up to date with things. So firstly we got a look at some new concept art, which is being called the Arctic Kelp. And you can see creatures up to the top right that immediately reminded me of stalkers, but you can actually see they have four little poking out bits, or maybe even just three, from each side of the creature. So they are slightly similar to stalkers in the way that they swim. It looks like they look very similar in the way that they move, but in the basic sense of the model, it doesn't look like it would be much like it. Again, disclaimer, just because there's concept art of it doesn't mean it will be in the game. There's also some other fish that we haven't seen before in the left, just behind this weird submersible thing. We haven't seen that type before, it kind of looks like an upside down angler fish if you know what I mean. It's got like a, a stick poking out the bottom, don't really understand what that's about. We also get a look at some new flora. These definitely look like the kelp forest vines that we see in the base game. And they even have the seed clusters that you see in the base game, but these are red, so whether they serve the same purpose or not, I don't know. Now, one of the most interesting things about this concept is the submersible that you see over to the left. Now, there's a bit of debate over whether this would be some sort of drone, perhaps, or actually a submersible that your person can fit into. If it's any smaller than a Seamoth, it's more likely to be a drone, but that's just my take on it. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see what you think. So next, on the 22nd of August, Charlie Cleveland released some new art is a very very small cropped out version of what seems to be a big bit of concept art because you can see it's a really bad quality picture which basically hopefully means that it's been really zoomed in um, and hopefully that's not actually the quality of the concept art but you can see the penguins that are going into the water breaking through the ice and you can also see some boomerangs that look a bit more arctic themed they're a bit more white which is nice i kind of hope to see creatures like the base game but just with a little tint to them that's the kind of thing i want to see it looks great but also new creatures are good as well so 20 hours ago abraxas released a post on reddit which talked about a new sub Nautica update. It's not a content update, so don't get too excited. It's basically just some optimization which should help the game run better for people with lower end machines. Basically, this has revealed a tiny bit about the expansion. So it actually explains it because one of the biggest confusions with this is that it's a DLC. Everyone's calling it a DLC, including myself. Sometimes I still call it a DLC. It's not a DLC. So he's described it as most of the Unknown Worlds team are working on the Subnautica expansion project. What started life as a DLC for the original game turned into expansion and now its own standalone adventure. The team is very excited about the path we're taking and story we're going to tell, breathing more life into the world of Snortgo on 4546B. We'll be announcing more about this project very soon. So, Obviously, this is confirming that the expansion will be taking place on the same planet as the original Subnautica. If that wasn't obvious already, pretty sure it was confirmed, but that is just a thing that you might find interesting. So over the last week or so, Tom Joubert has been putting on Twitter, he's been counting down, I think he started at 5 and he's gone down to 0.125, I think he's at now. He was trying to count down in days, I think, to some sort of release. Turns out there was a bit of a technical issue. I think the technical issue was that they didn't have a logo. So that is still on hold. They still haven't actually got to zero. They're still counting down. We're pretty close to getting something big revealed to us, which I'm really excited to see. So Tom also released, because he felt bad, which is good because he should, a screenshot or a picture of the Trello board for the Arctic expansion. We had Trello boards, obviously, for the original game which I used for Trello Tuesday which if you're old enough you will remember that. Bottom left is a Cyclops dock, don't get excited that has been there for ages, that was even in the old roadmap. So one of the most interesting things on this Trello board is the investigate exchanger save slash load. Now if you actually look into this picture far enough you can see that it is on some sort of ice so this looks like it's out of the water not underwater. 
And I don't know what an exchanger is, maybe it's some sort of thing where you can teleport items between it, maybe you can trade, I don't really know what that's supposed to be, but if you look in the top right of that little grainy picture from really, really far away, it looks like maybe some sort of base, I really can't tell, it could be absolutely anything. So they've also got something uh, where they're going to detail the main alien base cave and coordinate new art. Now if you look into this, it's possible that this is actually uh, a more zoomed out version of art that we've already seen, like because we had very small crops. You can actually see there are light sticks here as well, so great news for any of you light stick fans. Uh, remove kelp at funnel start, bring twisty bridges closer, open up ice ceiling. So basically that seems to be confirming both the twisty bridges and the kelp that we just saw for the game. I didn't realize that actually had been confirmed, but that's pretty cool. And some sort of character over to the right looks like some sort of android robot, or maybe that's just some sort of arctic mask. Um, it could be a human with just a special arctic mask. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But the biggest thing that you're probably all here for is Abraxis just tweeted a few hours ago this little clip of the penguin from the expansion blinking and looking around. It's terrifying, but it is the first footage we have of any creature animations, which is really cool to see. As you can see, one eye is circular, the other is triangular or something along those lines. It's pretty creepy, but it looks awesome. And you can see the detail. Obviously, it's a bit rough around the edges, but it's really early in development. So we'll just get to see it get better and better and better. And I cannot wait. So I'm going to leave it here, guys. If you did enjoy the video, please, please, please give it a like. Remember to join the Discord, and I will see you guys in the next one. Try, my friends.